Three, go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Hector, and yes, I drive a Mini Cooper. <laughs>
Another difference with the 2022 Mini Cooper is going to be the actual rear diffuser. They did change it for this year. It is slightly different, a little more aggressive. One thing I do have to say that's different from this and the R56. Remember guys, the R56 was from two models ago. Just want to remind you. But the difference too is that it doesn't have all those pops and bangs like that model did. This one's a little more tame, a little easier going. However, it does, does still sound pretty good. Now, next up, going inside the vehicle. Really love these seats. The seats in here are very high quality, very plush. You get these diamond stitching seats, beautiful, beautiful seats with this white piping on the side. That is an option though for this uh, uh, premium leather package. You do have to pay extra. It's about $2,000 more to get it, but even though it's still, it's definitely worth it. I want to speak about is they kept a lot of the older features, you know, like the, uh, like these aviation style buttons, you know, on the top here and at the bottom still gives it that older mini feel, which I really love that. Uh, the steering wheel, it's nice and thick. I like that, but I don't like that. It's not distinguishable from an S model. And that's kind of my biggest gripe with the new mini Cooper S is that from the inside, it's not that distinguishable that it's an S. If you look around in here, you wouldn't know if it's a regular Mini or if it's a Mini Cooper S. And probably one of the worst features in this vehicle is there is no blind spot monitoring, which is crazy. You can't even go to the most premium level. It doesn't matter. It does not have blind spot in the Mini Cooper. And I talked to Mini USA to ask them if maybe I didn't get the highest trim or what happened. And they said, nope, we do not offer it on the Mini Cooper S, which I just thought was crazy. Wish they would have blind spot monitoring. Wish Apple CarPlay came without navigation. And, um... You know, overall, I wish they would have given the S model inside the interior a little bit more of a sporty, you know, separate feel from a regular Mini Cooper. Without further ado, let's drive. Okay, all right, driving the new 2022 Mini Cooper S. So driving around town, it's very smooth. Like I said earlier, it's, it's gonna be a smooth drive overall with this vehicle. It's not gonna be a rough ride, it's definitely different from the previous Mini where it's just more of that sporty, more aggressive drive to it. Uh, this, this this isn't really gonna have that. Um, and you know, some pluses and minuses there, but overall, it's definitely really nice to, to drive, uh, you know, through the city and kind of has that feel of the the uh, GTI where, you know, it's kind of that car that you can do everything with, uh, which is nice, you know, but at the same time still has that Mini Cooper personality. It is in the end of the day smaller than a GTI. I really like how tight the steering feels. I wish, you know, the Volkswagen would kind of pay attention to what uh, they're doing over there at BMW. Uh, it just doesn't matter what car they have, the, the steering, it just has a much weightier feel to it. I know that it, it's it's not, it's gonna be a little bit numb, but but overall it's, it's much better than what they're offering if with the competition and it really is a big difference too from going from the sport mode to the you know eco mode or green mode you can just tell a humongous difference where in other vehicles you're really not going to feel that big of a difference but just bmw just does a great job when it comes to their steering feel uh at least better than what the competition does and i really like even though these paddles are plastic they are very big paddles and i i, I appreciate that you know for you know manufacturer anytime they give a bigger, more aggressive paddle uh, to the vehicle. You know, I kind of feel like the Mini Cooper overall, it's kind of grown up, you know, with us. It's like, as as we're growing up, it's like the car also is growing up. It's gone from more of a hooligan vehicle to a little more subdued, more more of a gentleman's or, or, or a gentlewoman car. Hmm? Next. All right, let's see how this baby accelerates. <laughs> it's got good mid-range torque. Sound bad either. I mean, taking these corners like a champ. <laughs> it's still a blast to drive. All right, guys, we're gonna go and actually head back and wrap this thing up. But overall, great review and a very fun car. All right, guys. So what's my conclusion? Well, obviously I own it, so you know I like it. But in all real honesty, I do wanna say that the Mini Cooper has changed a lot. It's no longer this wolf that it used to be, and it's a little bit more tame, a little more docile. I like that it's quieter than the previous Minis. I like that it's a little smoother to drive. I like that I have Apple CarPlay. And you know what? I love Chihuahua. There, I said it. I'm done. 
All right, guys, that concludes with this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like. And if you don't like it, oh, wait, there's no more dislike button. So might as well just like it. Thank you for watching. And this is Torque Junkies.